everybody. Welcome along to the Red Bull Ring as we get set for the start of the second half of DTM 2021. My name's Chris Hartley. I'm going to be talking you through the first of two free practice sessions, which begins in less than five minutes time now. And uh, with the sun shining, it's a beautiful, beautiful day here uh, in the uh, Styrian Mountains, this wonderful uh, venue. It's just about my favourite place to come and watch racing. It's not uh, been uh, a venue on the DTM calendar since 2018 now. So it's our first time back for uh, three years with DTM. And as I say, it's the start of the second half of the season with four weekends complete and uh, four weekends to go. It's just about 19 degrees air temperature. The track temperature much, much hotter than that. The sun beating down upon it uh, around about 37 degrees. The track temperature perhaps just crept up a couple more degrees up to about 40 degrees now, just over the last five or 10 minutes. Uh, so as I say, it's going to be a uh, 45 minute free practice session. DTM cars uh, all uh, in the garages at the moment, just opposite the the, uh, the commentary box and about to uh, uh, pop their uh, noses out and head down the pit lane in a couple of minutes time and uh, then we'll be underway another free practice session to come this afternoon and as is uh, always the format Saturday and Sunday uh, we have a qualifying session and a race apiece uh, for what will be rounds nine and ten of the uh, championship and uh, we come here uh, to the Red Bull ring with Calvin van der Linde as the championship leader on 129 points uh, but with his uh, gap now 33 points reduced after his first non-finish of the season last time out in what was a, uh, a balmy couple of races at the Nürburgring, lots of non-finishes. In fact, in that second race last time out at the Nürburgring, four of the top seven drivers in the championship standings recorded a non-finish. They see the cars lining up, ready to uh, head out onto the circuit. So Calvin van der Linde, uh, in the uh, Audi, the championship leader, 129 points. And uh, with uh, the uh, incredibly successful Ab Sports line team, he's got a 33-point advantage over Max Gotts, who uh, is now to second in the championship, uh, with a couple of very good fourth-place finishes at the Nürburgring for Team HRT. So he's on 96 points. Two points behind him now, Marco Wittmann, who again was very consistent. Uh, he's the only uh, driver to record points finishes in every single race of the championship so far. His worst results in eighth. He's been on the top step of the podium at Zolder, and he recorded his second podium of the season with a third place finish at the Nürburgring last time out. So Marco Wittmann uh, now up to third place in the championship. He's twice been a winner here at the Red Bull Ring before as well, albeit with a different team, but with BMW, now driving for the Vulcan Horse Motorsport squad. So he's third on 94 points just two behind Max Gotts. And they're up to fourth place in the championship. Uh, it is Alex Albon on 82 points now, having become the uh, first ever uh, Thai driver to take a victory in the DTM. Taking the uh, Ferrari to victory in race two after what had been a very difficult day on day one at the Nürburgring. But uh, Alex in the Red Bull, Alfa Tauri, a, of course, a superb drive to record his first win of the season. They'll be back to fourth in the championship. He's on 82 points. That's 47 points behind Kelvin van der Linde, but still with lots and lots of races and point scoring opportunities to come. His teammate, Liam Lawson, who leads the junior standings, is into fifth place in the championship now after a very tough weekend with no points recorded at the Nürburgring. So he dropped down to fifth. He's on 80 points, but still very much in the fight with Philip Ellis. Uh, also had a DNF in the second race at the Nürburgring, 72 points and sixth in the championship. Uh, we're going to have 20 cars on the track momentarily because uh, joining the fray uh, this weekend, making his DTM debut, is another young driver, Maximilian Paul, the German driver who's been... Uh, spending uh, lots of time getting used to uh, GT racing over the last couple of seasons in the ADAC GT Championship with T3 Motorsport, and that's who seconds. he comes in with today, with uh, the third of the T3 Motorsport Lamborghinis. So Maximilian Poor, teammate this weekend to the very exciting young drivers Esteban Moot and Esme Hawkey. has been coming very close to getting in a first top 10, a first points recorded uh, finish of the season at the Nürburgring last time out. So it's a uh, young team, Maximilian himself, with a very strong karting career, uh, as most of these drivers did. Many years he spent uh, karting, not just nationally in Germany, but also internationally. And uh, was the runner-up in the 2014 German X30 Junior Kart Championships. Car racing debut in 2019 
with uh, T3 Motorsports initially for a couple of seasons driving an Audi R8 in GT Masters and then this year uh, switching to the Lamborghini which is what he now drives so he's used to the car he's not used to the tyre though because they use uh, different tyres altogether in GT Masters Pirelli uh, branded tyres so uh, we have to uh, get used to uh, the Michelins there is Liam Lawson uh, headed out followed by uh, Vance on Avril and a first chance to see the beautiful surroundings here at the uh, Red Bull Ring as the cars head out onto the track. A track which has changed many times uh, over the years, both in terms of the length of the circuit and the configuration of the circuit as well. The history of this place dates all the way back to the late 1950s. They used to hold sports car races and later Formula 2 races uh, in the nearby uh, military base at the, on the military airfield in Zeltweg, which is about five kilometres from here. And then in the, the mid-1960s, Zeltweg actually debuted on the F1 calendar as, uh, still as an airfield circuit and then the permanent circuit here, the Osterreich ring, built in 1969, hosted Formula 1 every year from 1970 to 1987. It then got reconfigured and shortened, became the A1 ring, again hosted F1 for a number of years and then was bought by uh, Dietrich Masatic, Masatic, the uh, owner of Red Bull and uh, reopened as the Red Bull ring 10 years ago now in 2011 and the facilities here are absolutely second to none be it as a spectator, a member of the media, a team, everything is here for you and everything is done absolutely in tip-top conditions. So, a wonderful place to come and uh, watch racing as well with the uh, surrounding backdrop of the uh, hills and mountains here. Absolutely gorgeous. Central Austria in the middle of the mountains, kind of in the middle of uh, nowhere, surrounded by beautiful picturesque little villages around here. But the nearest city is Graz, which is uh, an hour and a half's drive about a two-hour drive from Vienna, which is where I flew into last night, and even further away from uh, the next uh, nearest uh, city and airport, which is Salzburg. That's about two and a half hours' drive. But the drive here is absolutely stunning. Lots of uh, tunnels on the uh, motorway as you come through, uh, into cutting underneath the hills and through the mountains. It's absolutely stunning. And a very undulating circuit, which these days is uh, 4.326 kilometres long, nine corners long. Certain sections of this circuit were what formed the original Osterreich ring, as it was uh, called initially. Right, two teammates here in the BMWs. Number 16 is Timo Glock and number 31, Sheldon van der Linde, who will both be looking for an improved second half of the season. Sheldon's had some uh, good performances, but um, he's lucky not to get onto the podium when uh, he got himself into a strong position at the Nürburgring. Timed his pit stop well, and only then to have the car fail on him just after he came out in uh, what was potentially going to be second position once all the pit stops had sorted themselves out. So uh, he'll be hoping for more. He's 11th in the championship, second highest place junior, but his best result remains a fourth place finish from the first weekend of the season. All the way back at uh, Monza. He's only had one, sorry, two other top six finishes since then. And for Timo Glock, it was a really tough start to the season. It's only in the last race at the Nürburgring that he scored his first championship points of the season with a seventh place finish. So the two Rover BMWs looking for more success. Rover a team with great success in the uh, Nürburgring 24 hours in particular, looking to make their name in DTM. Somebody who's already made his name in the DTM is uh, that man, Marco Wittmann, driving the number 11 Vulcan Horse Motorsports uh, BMW. Now, last time he came here was in 2018. Last time, the last four races have been won by Audis, like three of them by Rennie Rast, who's a couple of... Uh, a couple of metres away from me at the moment because he's uh, two commentary boxes away doing the uh, the German commentary as uh, guest commentator this weekend, Rene. But he was uh, three times a winner here. Last time we were here in 2018, he went both races on his way to uh, another great championship performance. But uh, he's also got the most wins here at the Red Bull Ring or here in Styria, in various versions of the circuit. 15 races have been held here. He's won three of them. Marcel Fassler, Eduardo Mataro. Matara, uh, Matthias Ekstrom and Marco Wittmann have all won two races apiece. Mike Rockenfeller, uh, there we see. Former Le Mans winner, former DTM champion on track. And a pretty good start to the season himself in the Ab Sports line. Number nine machine. Arjun mine has gone quickest for now at the early stage of the session, but Nico Muller crosses the line, goes a little bit quicker. One minute 30.475. Somebody else who needs a much stronger second half of the season. It's not quite worked out for Nico, despite 
a good second place finish in the opening weekend of the season at Monza. And then look at the top of the times now, it's got the debut on Maximilian Paul, the 21-year-old, into first place, 129.997 seconds. So that is almost half a second clear of Nico Muller, who's now been surpassed into second place. Has come Timo Glock. So the BMW driver, 130.415. And that puts him just over four tenths of a second away from uh, Paul's top time. Glock in second, Muller in third. Miney down to fourth place in the early stages of the session. Uh, with Kelvin van der Linde in fifth, 131.001. But it all changes because Max Gotts gets uh, out to fourth place now for Max Gotts in the Mercedes. 130.688 for the driver, second in the championship. So Gotts in a uh, strong position already. We've had about a dozen drivers that have set a lap time so far, but still lots of drivers who've only done a, a slowish lap or not yet completed a full lap. Been on, they've all been on the circuit, but they've not all completed a full lap. Some of them have opted to go straight back into the pit, so still plenty to change in this uh, session as uh, they get used to the layout, the drivers that haven't been here before, and the teams try and get as much data as possible with this new era of DTM. So any data they will have had from the last visit of DTM here in 2018 it's not going to be that helpful with completely different cars run these days. Mm. Liam Lawson's mm. just put his first lap in, but it's only 133. 129.9 is still the uh, best lap of the session so far. And Kelvin van der Linde up to fourth place now. Sheldon van der Linde in the top ten as well. It's then the absolute best first sector time, and he completes the lap, and he goes into third place. So Sheldon van der Linde uh, into the 130s now, 130.383 seconds for Sheldon. And so they've got second, Muller, third, Sheldon van der Linde, and fourth, Timo Glock, separated by hardly anything. They're all uh, in the low one minute 30s. But Paul with the edge, 129.918, impressive uh, stuff from him. T3 Motorsport Lamborghini. Still having set the benchmark time, followed by the Audi of Muller, the two BMWs of van der Linde and Glock. The Audi of Kelvin van der Linde, the championship leader, and the best Merck at the moment is Arjun Miney. The Mercedes are 130.547. Arjun having picked up his first championship points at the Nürburgring uh, last time out as well. So Vance on Abril makes an improvement up into the top 10 for him. It's going to be another potentially very quick lap here for Sheldon van der Linde because he's gone even quicker than he went in the first sector last time. He set the best first sector time of all on his previous lap. He's going even quicker at the moment. Personal best in sector two as well. So Sheldon van der Linde looking to get into the top two if he can. As we look at the new driver in the field, Maximilian Paul, still the driver to beat. But Sheldon van der Linde is going to be close to his time, I think, at the end of this one. Just at the front of the shot there, you saw the number 12, uh, Team Rosberg out in. It's a welcome back to the DTM for Devcor. Had to sit out the uh, last weekend at the Nürburgring. It was replaced in fine style by uh, Christopher Haas, who picked up a championship point and uh, could have picked up more in the first race. Uh, but it uh, was very quick from the go, but Devgore back, the American, having missed that uh, previous weekend. So here for his fourth event of the season. Sheldon van der Linde did his best lap of the session at 130.255, but it wasn't enough to improve his position, so he's still third quickest. Well, the gap has come down. It's only three, just over three tenths of a second away from Paul's best time in the Lamborghini. Liam Lawson into ninth place with the 131.023. There are the two improvements. See Esteban Moots in the Lamborghini opposite the commentary box is headed into the, uh, the pit lane. And Marcus Wittmann just been pushed back into Marco Wittmann just been pushed into the uh, garage as well. So Marco Wittmann, where's he at the moment? Twelfth uh, currently with 131.6. But I wouldn't pan panic at all about that because it's quite often the case that Marco tends to concentrate on other things other than very quick single lap times in the practice sessions, using it to build up for the race pace. It's quite often a bit anonymous in free practice one, perhaps less so in free practice two, but he quite often comes good once he gets to qualifying. Def Gore has come into the uh, pits as well. Liam Lawson is up to sixth place with a 130.527. Shelton van der Linde, absolute best again in the first sector, but he was uh, down in the middle sector of this lap, so I'm not sure he's going to improve on this one. No, 130.5, it's a good lap, and that's three quick laps that he's put in now. 
but uh, that one a couple of tenths of a second away from his best as he makes his way out of the uh, first corner here. Nicky Lauda at turn one through the kink at turn two. The hill, the climb from turn one up to turn three up to the, uh, the hairpin is much steeper than look. You get a sense of it from that shot from the top of the uh, top of the hill. But it is a steep old walk. I've walked around there in a uh, well, hotter day than this, actually. Last time I was here, I walked around in about 30 degree heat. It's a big old climb up there and a big haul on the engines and the torque of the cars to get up that hill. And then from the top, it's uh, undulating over as you run through turns uh, three and four. This was pretty much part of the original circuit through the infield to turns five. Turn six is a bit tighter and a bit shorter the run into it that it used to be on the original circuit layout at the Osterreich Green. The main difference between the original circuit and this one was that he went out much further. So from turn one rather than turn right, they carried on through a chicane and then big long straights, the original format of the circuit, which went out into the distance, then rejoined about where the hairpin is now, but turn three. Very, very quick circuit. Alex Albon quickest now, 129.680 seconds. Personal best in this sector as well. Just have a look in the uh, pit lane, I can see that Maximilian Paul, who was quickest, has come in, and Nico Muller, who was second quickest, but is now third, he has come in as well. So Alex Albon, the Ferrari, 129.680 seconds. Sheldon van der Linde ends his run. A successful run, which sees him fourth in the list at the moment in terms of best times. Liam Lawson is creeping up as well all the time, getting quicker and quicker each lap. He's up to fifth place now, and this is a replay of Timo Glock getting it a little bit wide and loose and shaking the nose of the Rover Racing BMW. But the 16 car coming out of the final turn kept in check. It's a fast turn that through the right-hander at turn 10. It's downhill into it as well. So all the weight is over the front wheels. The back of the car is pretty light, but you've got to get a really good run through there. The exit to turn 10 and the exit to turn one, especially with that climb up to turn three, are really crucial parts of the lap here at the Red Bull Ring. So the Ferrari's going well. Albert quickest at the moment, 129.680. Lawson, 130.3 in fifth place. Needing to get his championship hopes back on form, if you can, back on terms. Lucas Auer, carrying one of the onboard cameras this weekend, has popped himself up into the top 10 now as Liam Lawson goes quicker again. Each lap quicker than the one before for Liam. So the 19-year-old became the youngest ever winner of a DTM race. When he took victory at Monza at the start of the season, he's done a 130.217 now. So he's in that group from uh, third, Muller, really down to Max Gotts in ninth place now. It covered a lot of them by just two tenths of a second. Fairly short uh, lap, fairly short lap time compared to some of the other circuits on the DTM calendar. So the times will be tight, the gaps between the drivers will be minimal. So a really good run for Lawson. And Philip Ellis has popped himself up into the top six as well with a 130.323. And he's going a bit quicker on this lap. Liam Lawson has done a pretty good first sector as well. So his long run looking good here as we continue to ride on board with Lucas Auer and the bright sunshine here with the personal best through the second sector for the Mercedes driver. So uh, Lucas, who was involved with a couple of incidents in his team win with Mercedes at, at Nürburgring last time out. Using the curves, as you can hear there, on the exit to the turns here. See what his uh, lap time is like when he comes through. It's a 130.6, tenth slower than his best lap of the session. Into turn one he goes through, Mickey Lauda. And then the uphill run to turn three begins. Turn two, absolutely flat out to kink, really, rather than a corner. All the way out through the gears. And then eventually, find the braking point, drop down to first gear for the hairpin, accelerate out, use the kerb on the exit, up to second, up to third. Trap rises and falls now, down towards turn four at Rauch, and there's Death Gore about to head back out onto the circuit. Alex Albon's still on track, so last that was a 130.5. Now it's nine tenths of a second slower than his best lap of the session. He's the only one of the top five on track at the moment. Paul in second, Muller in third, Lawson in fourth, and Sheldon van der Linde in fifth, all in the pits, although Sheldon van der Linde now, as you can see, coming back out onto the track. Steep exit here. Well, the Mercedes is about to head out as well, which is either Max Gotts or Daniel Hunkadea. I just saw the back end of the car from uh, the commentary box, which is on the opposite side of the pit lane. I think it's uh, Hunkadea 
Yeah, it's Daniel Hunker there heading out. Max Scott's, I can see, still in the garage in the number four machine as Maximilian Paul having uh, really got straight down to business with uh, what was for a long time the quickest time in the session. Heads back out with T3 Motorsport Lamborghini. Another team, T3 Motorsport, new to the championship. They've had some good results so far. Managed the team principal is uh, Jens Fucht and uh, based in Dresden. So the Lancer Street is their home race. They've also competed in Blancpain in the 24-hour series, GT Masters, as I've said. An actually aspirated V10 Lamborghini Huracan, the car of choice these days for T3 Motorsport. It's Lucas out making his way through the hairpin, first gear at turn three. Currently in 10th place, Marco Fitman, who's gone back out, has just popped it up to 11th now with a 130.541. You've got Al, Fitman and Miley all within 23 thousandths of a second of each other, all in the 130.5s. But the best part of a second away from Alex Alban's best time. Alex is now in the pits, by the way, 129.680. Just been into the uh, onto the way bridge, so we'll head back to the garage and probably be a little while before we see him back out on the circuit. As we go back on board and get a real sense of speed difference here between one car's building up speed. Max Gotts has just rejoined the circuit, and the other one flying past. There's the German then second in the championship. And his third attempt at a DTM season, but now with a team and a car which can propel him to a championship challenge a 6.2 litre v8 mercedes about 550 brake horsepower a bit more than that perhaps former former bmw and adac gt masters champions of long pond sprint series champion as well back in 2014 dtm debut came with uh, mercedes with muka motorsport back in 2015 then he came back for a season in 2017 with Team HWA in the Mercedes. Got a best finish of fourth at Moscow, something that he has now surpassed with a win and visit to the podium so far this season. So the Bavarian getting the car back up to speed. His championship rival, Kelvin van der Linde, the points leaders up to seventh, 130.350. Because Al wasn't in the pits long, quick stop and check from the team and back out he's gone team o'clock heading back out onto the track as well so it's a pretty busy circuit at the moment Albert lawson abril book Florsch back into the dtm after racing at uh, the at uh, the spa the spa the Le Mans 24 hour race uh, last time out when we we're at the nurburgring uh, she uh, was replaced just for the weekend and comes back now, looking to score her first points of the season. Because Finkelhock did a good job. Got, um, although Liam Lawson won't think he did a good job. Got into trouble when he uh, tried an ambitious move on Liam in the first race when he was charging through and uh, looked like he was going to get the car up into the top five or six, but then got a penalty for the move, which put Liam Lawson out of the race and began his luckless weekend at the Nurburgring. But Sophia back now. Suffered a crash and some bad luck at uh, the Le Mans 24 hour race. But a great experience for her back in DTM now. Best lap is a 131.6 at the moment, putting her in 17th. Marco Wittmann just pops himself up to ninth, a bit quicker on that lap, 130.431. Found another tenth of a second. Very pleased to say that we're going to be back here next year as well because we had a press release this morning. Uh, from DTM announcing the provisional calendar for the 2022 season. It's uh, published early. Not all the uh, venues have been set, but it's going to be a nine round championship. And uh, next year, we're going to start in April, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of April at Portimao. So, Portugal at the uh, Autodromo Internacional de Algarve for the season opener next year to Porti Mau and then Lausitz Ring in May. There'll be two race weekends in June, but the circuits will be in Europe, obviously, but there'll be two to be decided where the tracks are going to be. Uh, the Norris Ring at the start of July, the Nürburgring at the end of August, back to Spa, where we were last year, where we started the season last year, uh, back to Spa on the 10th and 11th of September, and then back here at the Red Bull Ring on the 24th and 25th of September next year, ending the season at Hockenheim in the middle weekend of October 2022. So a couple of uh, venues, TBC, but all the dates have been set and an extended programme of nine events and 18 races 
with uh, six different countries on the list at the moment for the DTM 2022 calendar as back into the top spot in this practice session has gone Maximilian Paul with a 129.520 on his last lap. So Lamborghini absolutely flying. He's got used to the tyres then. Uh, Alvin still in the pits is second. Muller's back out, he's third. Lawson fourth has gone back out. Sheldon van der Linde is fifth. Philip Bell is sixth. Kelvin van der Linde seventh. Marco Wittmann eighth. Timo Glock ninth and Max Gotts tenth. They're all on track. So everybody in the top ten at the moment, bar Alvin in the pits. Lucas Auer comes back in. I can see Vance on Abril about to uh, head back out into the circuit in his Team HRT uh, Mercedes as well. No team boss this weekend. Hubert Hat made, made his uh, return to the DTM last time out at the Nürburgring. Still an active racer. He's competing for the team at the Nürburgring 24 hours. That uh, fog affected race earlier in the season, which lost a, lots and lots of hours were lost to the unseasonal, unseasonable weather conditions, the thick fog that uh, clouded the circuit at the Nürburgring. Hubert Hat, one of the drivers, to fall foul of the conditions, but uh, made his DTM return for the first time since the early 1990s last time out that was a one-off but uh, back to concentrating on running the team hrt as we see sheldon van der linde being pushed onto the way bridge for a technical check marco vitman the only driver last time out to improve esme hawkey had set a personal best first set to, but didn't complete the lap in the end came into the pits and marco vitman has just as you can see come into the pits as well So here in uh, Styria, I say Marco Wittmann of the current crop of drivers is the one that's had the most wins here. Two victories. BMW. Yeah, that's that. For me, we face a bit the oversteer and the medium speed corner. This I would attack a bit for the medium high speed corner. Um, to see if it helps this way. Um, Additionally, I have to say, for me, in the very low speed, we could have a bit more rotation in the car. So, this is off the case. We're uh, privileged to some uh, detail on the uh, setup of the car and uh, the feedback to the team from Marco Wittmann, who is excellent at uh, conveying to the team what uh, the car is handling like, how he thinks it can improve, where they're missing out. So he gives that feedback that here, it's oversteer that's the problem in the mid and high speed corners. Far, trying to be more accurate next to run. So brakes on. And then team radio for Dev Gore in the Team Rosberg Audi R8 team, uh, teammate to uh, Nico Muller. Team which has had plenty of success here at the Red Bull Ring. With uh, Rennie Rast, most notably, of late. Def Gore, then, one of the younger drivers in the field, just 23, and he started any kind of motorsport when he was 18. No really long background in karts. But he did become a US uh, karting champion in only his second season of karts in the very high speed DD2 category from uh, Oklahoma City. And before he came into uh, DTM, single seaters to begin his career in US Formula. 2000 uh, Euro Formula Open with uh, Carlin, Trevor Carlin's team, Blanc Pond, Toyota Racing Series. So he crammed in quite a bit of experience and quite a few different uh, championships. And not that he did full seasons in all of those, but he had quite a bit of experience in quite a short amount of time and uh, getting right. better and better in what's going to okay, be a learning you season. Have to, to slow down a lot in turn three and four uh, and in turn 10 to get the apex, but still this nervous. Um, Rear on turning into six, seven, nine, ten is still an issue still. Um, the front is quite aggressive to be honest in this section, so the front is too pointy and then we lose the rear. But it's okay. The, the amount of of steering I need to get the car around is just the rear can't follow. Um, we improved this and we improved a little bit the stability on on this exit on the rear. Uh, still a bit turning in over steer. Okay. Uh. So feedback from Max Gotts to the team, and a bit similar to what Marco Wittmann was saying, the mid-speed corners turn six and seven, which is uh, the left hand, double left-hander uh, in the middle of the lap, downhill running to turn six and turn seven. The car's a bit pointy at the front, a bit oversteery. So the front of the car 
turns in too aggressively, which kicks the back end out, makes the back end loose, and can send you into a spin if you don't catch it carefully. So the opposite understeer, where you turn the, the front wheel and it's a bit washy, it doesn't dig in as much as you'd want. You miss the, the turning in point. This one's been a bit too aggressive, so the car being a bit unpredictable. You see Arsh and Miney's uh, Mercedes being wheeled back into the garage. Fairly quiet circuit at the moment, with about half the, uh, the cars currently in the pits. Sheldon van der Linde, who's currently fifth fastest uh, heading uh, out, though. Nico Muller and Liam Lawson have just put their personal best lap times in with 129.7 for Muller, 129.9 uh, for Lawson. So they're the quickest drivers on the track at the moment. The next quickest driver on the track is Maximilian Paul, who's still got the fastest lap, but he's uh, just done a 130.227. And uh, on a slightly longer run now, it's a concentrate on longer run setup. And uh, Sophia Florsch has just done her best lap of the session so far, 131.663, although she might not match it on this lap. It's a little bit down on her best time in the first sector of the lap in the Absports line. Number 99, Audi. Esme Hawkey's still in the pitch. She's been in for a, uh, a while now. Under, under 60 and um, just close to 15. And it's the same with the balance and so I had quite a nervous rear because the front was quite hot and the rear was just getting there. Um, that's basically why I improved in the, in the third or fourth flying lap still. And uh, yeah, so that's for the tyre warming. The balance itself, it feels like on these very old tyres now, um, we're missing a little bit of mid-corner uh, turning for the medium high speed, so six, seven and nine. And because of that, I think I have quite a bad uh, traction as well, because I have a lot of steering lock. So, uh, Philly Bellis, top six in the championship, race winner in DTM now, giving his uh, feedback. They're on uh, very old tyres, he said. So that's part of the difficulty this year with the teams using these practice sessions to try and set up for qualifying and for the race. They can't use the pristine tyres, the, the newest, grippiest tyres that they're going to run when it does get to qualifying, and that will completely ch change the behaviour of the car. Limit uh, of compound of uh, sick tyres that it can use during the course of a race weekend, the Michelin S8M, which is a medium compound tyre. It's the uh, tyre of choice uh, this season. And uh, once each driver has completed their first weekend in DTM, every weekend thereafter, uh, they only get to use three sets of new tyres. So those three sets have got to last two qualifiings in two races. So you've got to have to use older tyres through part of the races and uh, you want to save your best tyres at least for the Sorry qualifying runs. Sorry how little front I have at the moment. Um, especially the last two corners, I have a lot of understeer generated from that. So that's what making it difficult for us. First of all, the, the track limit is a big issue because it's very inconsistent. Second of all, with our car balance, it makes it more difficult to stay in track limit. For me, an oversteering car is easier to, to stay in, whereas understeer, you are just lifting too much and you lose lap time. So it, you know, we definitely have to change this balance trend. So Calvin van der Linde, the championship leader, gives his feedback to the team. You're either too aggressive and oversteer through the corner, or if you try and back it off, you understeer, you lose more time. So whenever I try and change and adjust the driving, it's not quite working with the setup they've got. You mentioned track limits there, and lots of drivers have had track limits uh, warnings. And where are they mostly coming, looking at the, uh, the list? It's quite a long list that I can see on the, uh, the official screen. So the end of the lap, really, through turns nine and 10, where most of the track limits warnings are coming. Turn one as well, to a point, less so, but definitely fewer people getting caught out at turn one. So drivers, as they would always do, trying to push the limits and uh, get the car right on the edge of the track coming uh, th through and on, on the exit to the turns really letting the cars run out wide but if you um, cross the white lines at the edge of the circuit too often and on the curves that's okay with a couple of wheels you put four wheels over the curbs though that does become a track limits issue as well so they're gonna want to get the power down as early as possible which means they want to use as much of the width of the circuit as they can but then they're watched it very harshly these days by the officials who will give them a warning and eventually you know, penalties once we get to uh, qualifying and take laps away they can add penalties time penalties or 
drive-through penalties as well if the uh, incidents keep occurring during the races. So Sophia Florsch on track. We've got Max Boog coming to the top six now with the 130.301. Sophia Florsch, personal best in the last sector. The overall lap was slightly down on her best. A 131.3 is her best at a 131.484 last time around. So Sophia on the start of another lap, making her way through turn three at the hairpin. Pretty decent first sector, 23.026. Uh, but the best first sector is the 22.5. Timo Glock, who has been a race winner here uh, as well in the past. In fact, he won the same weekend. Timo uh, Glock took a, a victory the last time Marco Wittmann took a race at victory here. Uh, BMW winning both races uh, that weekend. So he's got the fastest first sector. Paul is quickest in the second. 22.5 seconds, the best at first sector time. Paul is quickest in sectors two and three, whereas Glock has the edge through the first sector. The second sector is the longest sector on the lap. So sector one takes you through turn one, up the hill, through the exit to turn two. It's before you get to the braking zone for turn three. So it's a pretty short sector of 22, uh, 23 seconds, but it's 40 seconds for the middle sector, that's when you've got to, got to get really right. So that takes you through turn three, turn four, the right-hander, turn five, turn six, and just before uh, turn seven at Graz, all of that infield, that's the longest sector, sector two. Get that right and you're on a flyer probably. And uh, sector three is the next longest sector, takes in turn seven, eight, nine, and the final turn at turn 10, and is about 27 seconds in length low 27, 27.1 is the quickest set to time through there. So it's not an equal split in terms of times, but the lap divided into three. Personal best for Max Book on this lap through sectors one and two as well. He's crossed the line and he's in the 129s now, 129.982 for Max Book and the number 18. And Muka Motorsport B, uh, a Mercedes, the uh, Book with a 129.982. He's only six thousandths of a second away from Liam Lawson's uh, best time now. They're fourth and fifth. So Book, who started the season initially just to come in for the first two races to stand in for Gary Paffett, has now ended up taking over the reins for the uh, whole season. Gary not able to uh, compete this year initially due to other commitments and then due to the various travel restrictions making life uh, difficult for racing drivers to get from the UK. So... Doing a good job, doing a good job again is Arjun Miney, who's just gone up into fourth place, 129.734. That's only 27 thousandths of a second away from a top three spot. Uh, with Nico Muller, who's in the pits now, just fractionally ahead. So it's a 129.520 for Paul, a 129.680 for Alban, 129.707 for Muller, and a 129.734 for Miney now. Lawson, fifth, Book in sixth. Sheldon van der Linde, Philip Ellis, Kelvin van der Linde and Ma uh, Marco Wittmann round out the top 10 as it stands with just under 12 minutes left on the clock. There's Mike Rockenfeller getting on 13th at the moment, but this might be a better lap. He was a personal best through sector one, it's a decent sector two, and he's up to eighth place. So 130.291, seven tenths of a second away uh, from the pace, almost matching Sheldon van der Linde's best time. As we go on board now with the driver who is second in the championship, Max Gotts, is in 12th place at the moment. Thudding over the curbs, personal best through the first sector. Decent second sector as well, it wasn't an absolute best, but he was within a tenth of the best second sector time. Arjun Miney has just set though the new fastest sector two time with a 39.494, that is flying. Personal best through sector one as well, so Miney on a real fly here, it's definitely, if he holds it together through the third sector, gonna get in the top three, but it could be higher than that. So we'll take Max Gotts over the line, see where he ends up. Arjun Miney has come through, and it's a 129.744. He lost time in the last sector in the end, but it was looking really good. Pushing on at the start of this lap as well, potentially, but that looked like it was going to be for two-thirds of the lap, a really good run. So 129.744 in the end. That is only a hundredth of a second away from his personal best didn't quite match his best third sector time there, otherwise he'd have been at least up to third place, potentially up into the top two. Maximilian Paul still has this advantage of one and a half tenth of a second over anybody else. Quickest driver on track at the moment is 
Argemani with that 129.7. He's done two 129.7s on the bounce now. Well, Nico Muller about to rejoin as well. He's just coming out of the pits, just coming into the pits. Mike Rockenfeller. Marco Wittmann on track with a personal best through the first sector. 40.1 seconds through the second sector, which is a pretty good time, but now they've had these really good second sector times from Argemani. And Max Gott's had a good second sector as well. They both broke the 40 second barrier. And he looks okay now. And again, he loses a bit of time at the end of the lap. So 130.4, tenth of a second away from his best. But if he's doing a longer run, if he can bang in five or six laps all within a few tenths of a second of each other, that will be, that will be a job well done. So the AF course, the team in front, directly opposite the uh, commentary box on the other side of the track, getting ready for somebody for tyres to come on. As Sergeant Miney heads down the pits after a couple of very good laps. Fourth quickest. Max got up to seventh now with a 130.238. There's somebody else that's quick on track currently. So is it going to be Lawson or Albon that head in? I suspect Lawson. Albon hasn't been out as long, but we'll see. Okay. So a little snippet of uh, radio from uh, the Get Speed team with their driver Arjun first ever Indian to score points in the DTM, or indeed to race in the DTM. It is Liam Lawson that's come in. So uh, about the track limits, you really need to take care of uh, not going with all four wheels on the green stuff between turn 9 and 10. That's where the, the biggest issue is. I'm not going for wheels. Uh, they, they said they're red and white with your right wheels. And they said even if the wheels are off it and you just have one on there, which I'm completely doing. I don't fucking understand. I'm not going four wheels off. Apologies for the expressive uh, language there from Liam. He's not the only one, is he, getting frustrated with the track limits issues? He's been told this, he said. we told him to go on the, on the kerbs. I'm doing that. I'm not going beyond it, but I keep getting warnings for track limits. And it's between turns 9 and 10 at the end of the lap. It's downhill run at the end of the lap through uh, rinse and into turn 10, where a lot, as I say, a lot of the problems are coming. Turn 1, another area, but it's the end of the lap that uh, the team are saying that's where they are looking at you for track limits. Alex Albon's had exactly the same thing. Vance on Abram, by the way, into fifth place now. 129.884. Good lap, that. And maybe quicker on this one. Personal best in sector one for him. And Kelvin van der Linde's found a bit of time. 130.222. All in the last sector, really, uh, to give himself uh, the eighth fastest time of the session now. Fractionally quicker than Max Gotts, his uh, championship rival closest championship rival who's ninth at the moment but there's nothing between them 16 thousandths of a second is all to choose uh, between the top two of the championship as it stands Sheldon van der Linde on a very similar time as well he's only 17 thousandths slower than Gotts and 36 thousandths of a second slower than him Rockefeller 32 thousandths of a second slower than him Ellis in 13th and then Marco Wittmann 74 thousandths slower in 14th place so really tight on the edge of that top 10 the top 14 now all within a second of each other. In fact, they're all within nine tenths of a second of each other. Esteban Moot, question mark. I haven't seen him at all, really. So, an issue, I suspect, for Esteban, unless it's tactical, trying to save the car, save the tyres. But I would have thought he'd be one of the drivers that want to get as much track time in the Red Bull ring as possible, being his first season of the championship. We've seen one Lamborghini from T3 Motorsport quickest, the other, He's slowest, and it's really not slowest, it's just that he hasn't done a proper lap. He's been on the track, but he's not completed a full lap yet. So Esteban, the only one not to set a proper time yet. Some worries perhaps over the car. Timo Glock found a bit more time to go into eighth place. 130.008, almost into the 129s uh, for Timo then. And you've got uh, his race of victory here in race two back in 2016. Just about quickest on the track at the moment. Kelvin van der Linde also. Right, it's this track limit issue. That is right off the track, isn't it? An example of going all four wheels over the kerbs. Go onto the kerbs, but not beyond the kerbs with all four wheels. And it becomes track limits. So, more cars being told. That was Marco Wittmann. We've had Vance on Abril on this lap. And Kelvin van der Linde was another driver we heard discussing this over the team radio. He's uh, just been 
pinged for track limits on that lap as well. If it gets to qualifying and you are deemed to have exceeded track limits on that lap, you get that lap taken away from you. So it's the lap on which you are a judge to have broken the rules, not your fastest lap necessarily, just that lap. When we get to qualifying tomorrow morning, that could be interesting. Great view of the uh, highest placed camera here at the circuit up at turn three. Great climb up towards the hairpin. Now, Daniel Hunkadea has been fairly quiet in terms of single lap pace in this session. He's only 17th at the moment, but personal best lap through the first sector with a 22.848. 40.2 through the middle sector, which was OK, and a personal best through sector three. So he's only up to 16th with a 130.8, but it looks like he's starting to push. And finally, Esteban Boot looks like he's heading out onto the track, maybe, hopefully, to get a proper lap in this time. But time is running out. More track limits infringements. We heard Liam Lawson discussing this. So what he said, his understanding of track limits there was if you keep the right wheels on the kerbs, you're OK. He said, I did that. I didn't go beyond that. Why am I being penalised? And you can see the right wheels were on the kerbs. But they're all beyond the, the white line. So teams and drivers and officials need to probably just double check that we're all singing from the same hymn sheet here in terms of what exactly is the rule. I think that's going to be a discussion that uh, team principals will have at the end of this session so drivers know what the limits are. So Sophia Florsch improves her lap time, 131.161. We've seen Ankadea improve, and Shelton van der Linde has made an improvement as well. It's only 38 thousandths of a second away from Timo Glock now, his teammate. Eighth and ninth they are. Lawson back out, about to be overtaken by Vadson Abril, who's fully up to speed. Abril personal best through the middle sector last time out, and a decent lap of a 130.040. Quickest driver on track overall and at the moment is still Maximilian Paul. His last lap was a 129.8, which would have been good enough for fifth quickest in its own right. It's not his best lap of the session, but it was a very good one. So he's quickest on track at the moment, followed by uh, Arjun Miney and Vatson Abril, who are both low 130s. And there's Daniel Hunkadea, who has now crept up to 12th place. 130.262 uh, for Daniel, who uh, got had plenty of speed. He's had plenty of speed at most weekends, but he got his first podium finish of the year in round eight of the championship. Race two at the Nürburgring last time out. He said the podium, the pace has been there for the podiums. It just hasn't quite worked out for one reason or another. But the car has been good. It's picked up lots of point scoring finishes. But uh, up to 10th in the championship now, Frank there. See if he can kick on. The 30-year-old, uh, another experienced DTM race coming back into the championship in this new era. Sheldon van der Linde is up to fifth now, 129.813 at the end of the session, into the final two minutes. Arjun Miley back in the pit, we saw Liam Lawson there pushing on. Previous lap was a slow lap, he was just setting up, but this is now looking like much more of a push lap. Let's see what he is when he gets to the timing beam in a moment. That's a 22.692. That's good. The absolute best first sector time to 22.554. So he's just over a tenth down through the first set. So his best lap is nearly half a second adrift. So if he loses a tenth in each sector, he'll be on for a better lap. But as I say, it's the middle sector. That's the one you've really got to get right. 39.4 seconds is the quickest middle sector now, Arjun Miney. There are many drivers that have broken the 40-second bracket through that middle sector. And Daniel Hunkadeh has just done so, and Nico Muller has as well. So we'll see what he can do. Still waiting for Esteban Moot to record a lap time. Liam Lawson, absolute best in the middle sector by a long, long way, 39.042. So he's not more than half a second off the best second sector time. The tenth down on the best time of the lap in sector one, but he's more than half a second up now. Can he hold it together through the final sector and avoid uh, trap limits issues as well? Flings it down the hill. Right side of the car, definitely still within the white lines as he came out through turn 10. This is going to be a very good lap from Leon Lawson. It could be the top of the times. We'll see where it puts him as he crosses the line and goes through. But actually, the last sector fades a little bit again. So it's his best lap, 129.832. He's found the best part of two tenths of a second. Sixth place it is, but it looked like he might get 
even higher than that at one point with that middle sector of the lap but maybe he's being a bit circumspect through the final bit of the lap now with these track limits warnings have been talking about maybe he's not quite as on the edge as he was through so turns nine and ten just to make sure the lap counts sure that's going to be on the minds of the drivers when it keeps happening as the checkered flag comes out margot Vittman's going to end the session in the pit lane he comes in now and will be 15th but as i say probably won't be perturbed about that because he's very often not worried about being the quickest in, or one of the quickest in free practice one it comes good when it needs to for marco usually qualifying and particularly this season in the races although the Volcano squad have got much better at their qualifying performances the last couple of rounds of the championship Liam Lawson still out there, still flying. Personal best through sector one this time, and an absolute best through sector two as well. 39.363 seconds. Will he find a bit more? Will he push a bit more daring through turns nine and ten on the track limits? If so, he can get himself perhaps up into the top three or four here. Good pace in the Ferrari. His teammate Alex Albon's going to end the session perhaps in second place. That's where he is at the moment. They're both running together, both coming out of turn 10 as it stands. Albon's on a pretty decent lap, not an absolute flyer. Through they come, and Lawson gains another position up to fifth place, 129.748. His best lap of the session, his best two laps of the session coming right at the end. He will be fighting to get as many points as he can, as always, but with uh, particular emphasis on... Uh, trying to get this championship back on song after a difficult weekend and a half really because he had that uh, bad luck in the previous weekend at Zolder as well getting caught up in, a, in an accident qualifying is where he said to me we've got to get that right we just can't get any more out of the car and qualifying at the, mo the moment and we're hoping that balance of performance might be tweaked but the Ferraris do look good here and so too the Lamborghini brilliant start to his DTM career for Maximilian Paul they might get him back if he keeps doing this. 129.520. He's going to end the first practice session at the top of the times. And he was quickest out of the box, wasn't he? Lost uh, that top spot for a little while in the middle of the session while he was in the pits. Came back out and went even quicker. So 129.520 by 0.16 seconds. He is quicker than the Ferrari of Alex Albon with Nico Muller. He'll be buoyed by that. Third place in the Audi, 129.707. And then you've got Arjun Miney, who's uh, turning out to be quick everywhere these days. He's in fourth place and looking to kick on from that excellent run at the Nürburgring. So here's confirmation uh, of the times with T3 Motorsport at the very top of the times. 129.520 seconds for Paul. 129.680 for Alban. Muller in third with a 129.7. 129.7s as well for Miney in fourth and Lawson, who was flying at the end of the session in fifth with Shelton van der Linde sixth, Svansson Labrell, Max Boot, Timo Glock and Kelvin van der Linde, the championship leader, rounding out the top ten. And Max Gotts at the top of the second page of the Times, 11th quickest. Uh, no time recorded in the end for Esteban Moot. So that's the end of the first 40 five-minute free practice session uh, here at the Red Ball Ring. We'll be back for free practice too this afternoon from the team and me, Chris Hartley. Thanks for listening.